So now we're going to move to some practical things, some praxis. And we're going to talk about prayer. Having learned all of what God has done for us in the creed and learned about how we worship, and we also want to talk about how do we nurture our relationship in prayer. We pray really for three reasons. Jesus commanded us to pray. He wants us to pray. There's power in prayer. It nurtures our relationship. And most importantly, there's a promise. And that promise is that God does indeed listen. But when we come at prayer, a lot of folks are, well, I don't know what to do. I've never prayed. I don't, how do I do this? It even seems strange and it's understandable. But maybe if we think about it as Martin Marty, a kind of famous Lutheran theologian has called prayer conversation between two people who know each other well. If we could think about prayer as conversation, I think that's a really helpful way to come at it. When you have a good friend, you tell them everything, the good and the bad and the joys and the sorrows. In fact, when you look at the book of Psalms, we see this. We see psalms of thanksgiving and praise, psalms of confession where asking for forgiveness. And we see psalms where the psalmist cries out in like a lament, you know, God, where are you? How long are you going to be absent? That's conversation. Sometimes people come at prayer thinking I've got to do it just so or just right. And I think if you think about prayer as simply letting God know what's going on for you. We also have the promise, we hear this in the letter of Paul to the Romans, that God intercedes for us, or the Holy Spirit intercedes for us with groans deeper than words. So God knows our struggles even before we bring them to him. So really it isn't just for God that we pray, it's, it's for ourselves and that's, that's an important component. Now, a lot of times people ask me, Pastor Bill, yeah, all of that's fine, but I mean, I don't know what to do when I pray. And so there, I learned a little acronym a long time ago called the Acts of Prayer that might be helpful for you. And the, so the first one is adoration. The second one is confession. The third letter is T for thanksgiving and the last letter is S for supplication. So the acts of prayer. So yeah, you wanna say, God, you are awesome. You are amazing. And you do some adoration when it comes to prayer. Uh, you do have the promise that God will forgive your sins. You're in Christ. And so you do confess the things that you've messed up on, the, the places that you've missed the mark. Uh, and and the things that are heavy upon your heart you can confess those and you should confess those that's kind of claiming your baptism the gift that God gave you and being a part of the church and so you can do that now sometimes of course it's great to have a confessor a pastor or someone who can actually remind you and proclaim to you God forgives you but you can do that yourself pray to God God I missed the mark here today and I really wish I hadn't and and ask for God's help with that or you know, maybe you haven't forgiven someone like you think you should. Um, all of those things can come up in your conversation with God as confession. Well, we've talked under that third, uh, first article of the creed about thanksgiving and certainly spend time in prayer thanking God for what God's done for you and just for the, all the goodness in the world. But then finally that, that S word, supplication, it's a fancy word for asking. I, I think I think we want to let God know what we're, what we need. And so we want to tell God about um, our needs, our concerns, our hopes, our joys, um, where we are really in need of God's help. Sometimes people say, oh, well, it's too little of a thing or too big of a thing. You know, I just think we should ask. But I also, when we ask, I think we should be ready for however God's going to respond to that prayer. Kind of let go of the results. Sometimes in prayer we're really focused on results and prayer does have results and God answers prayers in ways that we don't see but sometimes we in our human perspective get pretty hung up with those results and so I kind of say ask God about everything um, big and small and then just really be open to however God responds to that prayer so kind of let go of the results but don't 
don't hold back. Um, God knows what we need even before we ask him, but I think that's a part of prayer, to pray for other people, to pray for something that's going on for ourselves. Ultimately, in the letter of 1 John, we hear Jesus, or the, through the apostles, say that God hears and responds to everything in, that we ask in accord to God's will, and that's always the tricky part. Uh, so there's a lot of questions around prayer, and um, it is kind of a mystery, but I guess I just want you, at this point in your journey, to think about prayer as conversation between two people who know each other well. And sometimes maybe that conversation is just reciting, um, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, something like that, and just to, just to be quiet with God, listen to God. Um, Maybe you get a sense or a leaning about what God might want you to do in a situation. I'm standing out here by our labyrinth. This is a kind of a, play, a prayer walk for us here at Silverdale Lutheran. It's a place of intentional prayer. Um, we don't put any magical powers in the structure of the labyrinth or anything like that, but we have blessed this space as a special place for prayer and I found just walking this pattern and walking this path to the center and spending some time there and then walking slowly out helps me center myself in a way that I can't maybe just by sitting down in a chair or being at home. I get distracted really easy. And so using this tool which we have here at church is a great way for you just to be quiet with God, do the acts of prayer right here on this prayer labyrinth. Um, so. Prayer is important, and that's why we have this tool here. But you can pray no matter where you are, in the gym, in the car, just keep your eyes open <laughs> when you're driving, but I pray all the time. Um, the last thing I guess I want to hold up when it comes to the practical aspect of prayer, we've been doing a lot of thinking at Silverdale Lutheran about worries. And through some sermons that have come and Bible study, we've kind of come up with this adage, every time you worry, that's the signal to pray. So pray. Put, bring those worries and those concerns to God because God promises in Christ Jesus that he hears those concerns.